When you think about Journey Community Church, you might think of it as the theater church, maybe a church that loves kids, or maybe the church with a cafe. And while we are excited about where God is taking us, today we want to spend a little time looking back and celebrating 71 years in Colony. It was January 7th, 1945. A man named Frank Pulaski stepped off the train onto this very platform. Collingwood had not been his planned destination, but as often is the case, God was about to change his plans. Frank Pulaski was my father, and he uh, was uh, the provincial overseer of Ontario and he was asked to uh, see if he could scout out the land to uh, get some churches started. And, th and this is unclear of why he stopped in Collingwood, whether it was um, a feeling he had that this was a place or there was a storm he often talked about. He got here during a snowstorm, maybe the train stopped, and somewhere in my memory I remember him saying he was not feeling well. So for one of those reasons, he got off at Collingwood and he found out there wouldn't be another train until the next uh, afternoon. Once off the train, Frank Pulaski checked into the Arlington Hotel downtown. There he met a, na a man named Herb Finley, who told him about the Tracys. Ben Tracy that lived up on 6th Street and the 10th line had been the uh, clerk and treasurer of the Pentecostal church. And so he tried to get a taxi to take him there, but there was this wonderful January winter storm, and uh, no one would take him out there, so he just said, well, I guess I'll have to walk. You might be interested to know that um, the Tracy family that was first introduced to my dad had uh, people in the church today, and that's uh, Marge Denbach and Doris uh, Bowens. They are nieces of Ben Tracy. Ben Tracy was my uncle and Aunt Mark. We called her Maggie, Aunt Maggie. And uh, her mom and dad, I see her mother, were first members, and Oliver, and Uncle Ben, and Aunt Maggie. Where was their their farm? It was on Sixth Street, way on Sixth Street, on a farm on the south side of the road. I'm not sure how far that is up to the tenth line, but most of you would probably know where that is. And uh, so he walked there and went to uh, the Tracy home. They had heard a uh, radio program and it was from the Church of God, and they liked what they heard, but um, after that they could never get that station again, and they had no idea how to contact the Church of God. So when they heard that my dad was from that organization, they got really excited. They invited him in, uh, my dad talked to them, and uh, they offered him a room to stay that night and fed him some supper, and uh, that was the beginning of his uh, introduction to Collingwood. And after he'd spent the night, the very next morning, he started off looking for a place for this very new church to stay. My dad was in the neighborhood of St. Marie and George Street, um, and he had heard, of course, that the building would, might be a possibility, and he was walking around there and heard some men talking that they would think that they were going to sell. Frank Pulaski met with the man who owned the property on 58 George Street, right here. This property would be a great tool for this church for many, many years to come. Well, I actually, as a young child, I went to the little church there on St. Marie and George Street. And my sister and I, we used to go there to Sunday school and to young people's. I was 17, I, my cousin Lorraine Tracy, she, she invited me, so I went there with her. And, uh, and then when I was, I, I went there all that year, yeah. while I was finishing high school. And then when I was 18, I got baptized. This is Florence Kinsman, a very special lady in uh, my life and the lives of many other people. Florence was uh, one of the first members of the Collingwood Church of God. She joined the church in 1950. 
although it was established in 45, she attended the church for some years before that. And I remember as a young person hearing my dad say that uh, the Church of God would have never been able to uh, function if it hadn't been for Florence Kinsman, Levina Miller, and Marge Dinbach. Now when I was about eight years old, after the service, I went outside and I was talking to Brother La Fortune, and I asked him, I said, do you think you can save me? And he said, no. He said, I can't save you, but Jesus can save you. So I gave my heart to the Lord then. Um, I came to Collingwood in 1960 with my dad when he was appointed pastor of the church. Um, I was very excited to come to a new country. Canada was seemed like a long way off from Detroit to me. A new country and new experiences and uh, it seemed like home right away. And uh, I've often thought how the Lord worked all this out uh, that uh, my dad and I were just uh, so happy to be in Collingwood. My husband and his uh, sister decided they would come and visit the uh, church. And I was never quite sure if it was the pastor that enticed them in or pastor's daughter. But anyway, we <laughs> that was our first meeting. We became part of Journey in 2002. And as soon as I walked in that door, I felt it, this is it, and we've been there ever since. 2003 was a year of transition and change with building limitations and a longing to become more visible in their community. This congregation decided that maybe they would become a portable church. We had a amount around 15 to 17,000, if I remember right, that we needed for a year. Uh, the money showed up, it was a yes. So the, old, the saying back then was, show me the money. And God showed up and showed us the money, so we were all in. And they remained portable for a number of years, going through a building fire, selling their historic building. But in 2010, Another transition was coming that was going to be a huge step. We'd been, uh, we'd been at Admiral School for uh, about six, seven years when we began to ask some serious questions about how can we be more involved in our community. And so we began to really ask the question, where could we be that would give the greatest opportunity for people to actually attend and be a part of our Sunday mornings? So we really began to thrash around the question about uh, moving to a different venue and particularly uh, the Galaxy Theater. Part of that transition was actually the change of our name, and, and that wasn't an accident. That was a, a, a thought-out thing that we wanted to move to being this, this community church, but also connecting it with the name Journey, where uh, we recognize that we're on a journey together, a spiritual journey. We wanted a lot of people to join us on that journey, and uh, we're really glad that you've joined us on that journey today. So no matter where we are or what we're doing, Journey Community Church is going to be committed to preaching God's Word and committed to serving our community in hopes that someday we transform it.